So I've just set off on my second ever solo wild camp. I say solo, I have my little puppy dog with me today. Does that still count as a solo hike? I mean, I'm carrying all the kit. His name's Bertie, I don't think I introduced him. This is Bertie. We are heading up to camp on Fleetwith Pike in the Lake District. So I've parked at Honest to Slate Mine, just down there. And I'm just setting off on this road, which will lead me onto my route. I've climbed Fleetwith before, but I've climbed it from Haystacks. And uh, I have an extremely heavy bag on my back. So I decided on this occasion just to enjoy a bit of a shorter walk and then I can enjoy more of my evening uh, without being too dead. Point six of a mile in and I've stopped off for a break because this heat is absolutely killing me. But there's a really nice view of Honister Pass. miles in I've just had to stop to snack on some peanut M&Ms because this is so tough it's tough hiking in this heat anyway let alone with such a heavy bag I've got a heavier tent than I had last time I've got more stuff with me but these views look at those I think I've only got about I've got less than a kilometer to go until I'm at the summit so I'm nearly there home for the night. So I just need to decide now where I want to pitch up because I want that view. Uh, the sun should set right over there. That's why I picked this spot to camp on because the views are just absolutely incredible. I'm all set up, I've got my tent set up, I've got my beautiful view. We've got another hour and a half until the sun sets. So I'm just gonna chill, maybe cook some food. I thought I would share a few tips because I know a lot of people are very nervous to go solo hiking. It is a daunting thing to do. I was very apprehensive before the first time I did mine. And this is a different experience. So uh, it's only my second one. So I'm still a little bit apprehensive, a little bit nervous but more excited but I thought I would share a few tips that have helped me and the first tip would be pick somewhere that you've been before so either choose somewhere that you've been on a hike and you've like noticed a spot that you really like the look of or somewhere that you've been and camped before with other people um, I would even recommend once you've picked your spot go in and camp in there with somebody else or with a group of people so you can get familiar with the location and with the area and then when you go back to camp there by yourself it's probably not going to be as daunting of a prospect so that's my first tip is to kind of go somewhere that you feel familiar and that you know the area and hopefully that you'll know the route so you won't have to worry about navigating because you'll have a heavy bag on your back and you can just focus on getting yourself up to the spot and enjoying your wild camp. Tip number two would be not to post about it. So I think especially as a female, there's obviously a vulnerability and a safety aspect that comes with solo hiking. You are essentially sleeping in a sheet of whatever that very thin material is. Um, the last thing, that you should do is to post your location and share what you're doing. Um, what I tend to do is take my pictures and my videos and share them the next morning. So I'd be very cautious to not share 
what you're doing, where you're going, what location you are in uh, until you've left just to give you that added safety element. Um, I tend to find that the higher up I am, the safer I feel because I feel less accessible. So tip number three will be to share your location. So especially if you're going somewhere on your own, I think it's really important and I always suggest doing that on solo hikes and solo adventures. Um, and the best way to do this for me is on WhatsApp. You can share your live location with somebody so they can constantly track where you are. Or you can drop a pin to your location once you've got to your camp spot and you've set up your tent. It just means that somebody knows where you are and you've got that extra safety element there of somebody knowing where your last location was, just in case anything goes wrong, which hopefully it won't. Hopefully that'll make you feel a little bit safer, that somebody knows where you are, and if you're out of signal, there is somebody out there that knows your last location. Tip number four would be to download some entertainment. So I would always assume that you're gonna be out of signal when you go on a wild camp, especially if you're somewhere up high. Um, so to keep yourself entertained and to stop your mind from wondering if you are a little bit nervous or anxious, make sure you've got some music downloaded or a podcast, audiobook, films on your phone or an iPad or a Kindle or something. I have uh, a Kindle and I even bought my iPad on this one because I didn't have too far of a walk so I was feeling ambitious clearly um, and I also have films etc downloaded on my phone so even if I'm out of signal I've got plenty of things to keep me entertained throughout the evening uh, hopefully as well just nice views and a lovely sunset. So my fifth and final tip is to take some wine. I I found these cans of wine which a little bit chavvy but I always enjoy having like a little can of wine or cider or something at the top of the summit watching the sun go down sitting outside my tent eating some food it's just a really nice way to finish off your evening so if that's something that will make you feel a little bit better do that take some hot chocolate or a coffee or whatever you want but just take some treats or some snacks um, and just try and make it as enjoyable of an experience as you can and hopefully you'll really really enjoy it. So those are a few tips that help me feel a little bit safer on uh, my solo wild camps and just help me to enjoy it. So I hope that helps and just have the confidence that you will have a really amazing experience. And I think if you go into the experience thinking that, then you're more likely to actually experience that as well. had a lovely evening I've had some food I've chatted to some people that were um, on the mountain nearby there is somebody camping right next to me um, which is gonna be a new experience so I am gonna read I've got my wine and watch the last of the sunset So I'm all packed up, the sun is rising just over there. So I'm just climbing a bit higher to get a better view because where I was camped uh, was blocking the view of the sunrise. It is 5.30 a.m. I did not get very good sleep and I have midgy bites all over my face and everywhere. I wasn't able to film much last night because I ended up uh, pitching in the middle of a photo shoot that was happening. So there was a lot going on at the top of Fleet with Pike last night. There were um, paragliders and trail runners. There was Tom Cruise getting flown up and down a mountain in a helicopter. So it was an eventful night. So I cooked some food, read my book, watched a movie and enjoyed the sunset. So overall, a really nice experience. Such an amazing view from Fleetwood Pike. A really great place for a wild camp, but just bear in mind that it might be quite popular. So if you are wanting to escape people and find a little bit more of a secluded spot, it's probably not the best choice. But uh, yeah, what a beautiful morning.
thank you so much for watching uh, if you enjoy the video please like subscribe share um, check out some of my other videos I've done a lot of challenges or hikes and I did my first solo wild camp in Snowdonia upon Egan so check that out if you want another idea of somewhere to camp but thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time